I've waited a long time for this device and there's a couple reasons behind that. One is this is actually the first time that I've gone two years without upgrading. This is my current iPhone, the iPhone XS Max, and I've never actually had my hands on an 11 or 11 Pro. So I never, besides just watching other people's YouTube videos, I've never actually seen or had the capabilities in my hand of what that camera could do. And on their virtual stage, Apple really focused this year on the pro cameras and everyone was really excited about most of the features that they announced. And so my standards for what this camera is going to be capable of absolutely skyrocketed. And so on my first day of having it, I want to share my findings and talk about why I'm actually kind of disappointed. Now, if you're new here, what I focus on is the true capabilities of smartphone cameras and what is the best way to get the highest quality out of that camera. Over the past couple of months, I've reviewed the Samsung Galaxy uh, 20 Ultra, the Sony Xperia 2, and I'm working on the Pixel 4a right now. Completely different types of phones and cameras, but all of which I did a deep dive on the camera capabilities. Now I always do testing both in the stock camera app that it comes with, as well as a third party app for video. We're using Filmic Pro on iOS. Since the MC Pro 24 FPS app uh, is Android only. And for any stills photography, in case you're curious, I use Halide, which they just had a huge new update, Halide Mark II. Um, so if you're interested, all those links will be in the description. And to edit the photos, I use Darkroom, both fantastic apps. But again, for this video, we're gonna be sticking to video stuff. So I got the phone actually later in the afternoon today and I didn't really start testing it till the evening time. And so I went outside actually during blue hour, which comes right after golden hour, right before dusk. And it's a very small window of time at this time of year. And so minute by minute, everything was getting darker. And so it was a great test to compare how much better in low light the iPhone 12 Pro is compared to my 10s Max. And to my surprise, it's not a world of difference in certain situations. So taking a look at this clip for example, the 12 Pro has a faster lens. It also has a two year newer sensor. So it's going to be much brighter. And you can also tell that although the 12 Pro still is noisy compared to something like a real cinema camera, it's definitely a less distracting noise and it's kind of a better noise than what the 10s Max is. So, so I am happy with the better noise. And even some of these shots got all the way up to 2100 ISO, but even at 1600, it held together okay. But honestly, I remember doing this same exact shot at nearly the same time of day, if not a little darker on the 20 Ultra, uh, Galaxy 20 Ultra. And I think that phone honestly did a little bit better. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Now, honestly, the hardware obviously gets better every year, but one issue that a lot of people are talking about that is very noticeable, that is borderline kind of a killer for the overall vibe of this camera is the fact that they still have not gotten rid of the terrible lens flares. These almost look like those dots that, you know, a bunch of like ghost hunters will say are those like glowing orb things. And if you have any sort of light source that is coming through that lens, it is going to reflect this really ugly dot all over the screen. And if you're in a city at night taking video, you're just gonna have like a million dots everywhere. Every time a car moves, every time you move past a street light. Honestly, I'll say that is the biggest con to the hardware of this phone. As with every phone that exists nowadays, uh, all three cameras that are on this phone are completely different sensors and have completely different capabilities. Since again, we're talking about low light situations right here, the ultra wide lens is basically unusable. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using it in extreme low light situations at all. It's significantly darker than anything else. The main sensor is definitely going to be the best one and the telephoto honestly did pretty well. I think that one would be a perfectly fine complementary lens. One neat little tidbit though I will say is I did notice that as I'm recording video, you can actually switch between any of the lenses just by tapping them. But on my 10s Max, you can zoom in, but it's not actually changing the camera sensors or lenses. Uh, you're basically just digitally cropping at that point. So before you start recording, you have to pick which lens you want to start with. And so it is kind of cool that you can, on the same video clip, use all three lenses on the 12 Pro. I'm sure that was there on the 11 Pro, but 
you can tell me down in the comments. Many hours later. <sighs> All right, so I literally just got back inside, did a bunch of shooting today, playing around with the 12 Pro. And by the way, before we get into the uh, daylight exterior footage, I gotta say, I thought I'd use this case a lot more, but as you see in the B-roll, I took it off for most of the shots because like most of their silicone, whatever cases, it collects dust and everything in your pockets like crazy. So not a big fan of these cases. Um, and also like a lot of people are reporting the stainless steel for the 12 Pro collects f not only fingerprints, but grime like crazy. So like fingerprints, you know, on the screen, you can just take your shirt and wipe off and stainless steel, like you're gonna need something special to clean that. Now, last night when I was testing low light footage, Filmic Pro was there to save the day. But to be honest, most of today, I actually stopped using Filmic Pro after a while. She really started to like the look of the uh, Dolby Vision footage that was coming out of the stock camera app. And I also wanted to use that more because I wanted to show you guys what the footage looked like. And you know, they talked about this in the keynote, others have talked about it, but as soon as you take it away from a Dolby Vision screen, AKA my computer and my monitors, uh, it looks very different. It looks undersaturated and it doesn't look anything like what you shot and when you play back on the uh, phone itself. If you're like most people, which again, they talked about in the keynote, who take videos on their phone and just look at them on their phone again, then you're gonna be just fine and it's gonna look exactly the way you shot it. Uh, in a lot of these interiors, the HDR really, I was impressed with like this shot of the room here. You can see that the outside is still properly exposed. Again, it was an overcast day. It wasn't a dark overcast day, like it's storming out, but it definitely wasn't super bright. I have a feeling that it would be blown out if it was, but it definitely still has a nice natural HDR look. It's not looking too hyper realistic like I've seen some phones try and do. And actually Samsung phones tend to do that quite a bit where they really oversaturate and really hyper realistic, which again, a lot of people like, and that's totally fine. But iPhones have always had a very natural look and this kind of sticks to that natural uh, tradition while also keeping more in proper exposure. But you can see some of the noise levels getting a little high on the shadow side here, like the shot of the blinds. However, going through and color correcting, adding some slight uh, noise reduction in DaVinci Resolve, clean it up actually pretty nicely. And in all the exteriors, everything was really sharp, relatively no noise. It still has a digital look, so I'd recommend even softening it up a little bit, but there is no log profile in the stock camera app. So when you look at the scopes here, everything is gonna be top to bottom, stretched as much as possible. So to get that cinematic look, you actually wanna kind of bring down the highlights and bring up the shadows a little bit because movies actually sit kind of more in the middle. The commercial look is more contrasty and punchy and it really stretches uh, the top and bottom of the waveforms. But for a you know softer cliche cinematic look, you wanna kind of squeeze it a little bit more and then add some contrast and mess with the midtones to get the proper curves and contrast that you're looking for. And I was pleasantly surprised that you could push the image quite a bit. I was able to add some Rec 709 LUTs, some very base, uh, like a base cinematic LUT, and then make a bunch of corrections. Again, as I said before, you are working on compressed footage, so it is not raw videos. So you have to be careful, you have to finesse it. Phone footage, you just can't manipulate it as much, so you have to be careful or else you're gonna start breaking the image and you'll see different splotches, kind of like, I'll show you an example here, uh, where this is what it looks like when you push a grade too far and the image just can't handle it but I could definitely get a sense that the 10-bit color um, was allowing me to push the image further than I've ever pushed phone footage before. And so you may be asking, Michael, all you're talking about is how great this footage looks. You just said it was the best uh, phone footage you've ever seen. So why are you disappointed? I'm disappointed because Apple put so much amazing resources, time and energy and money into amazing technologies like partnering with Dolby Vision and putting 10-bit color and newer codecs, working on better autofocus and just everything on the back end. But when you give someone a pro device, you should give them control. The fact that 
the Pro models still don't have any enhanced or advanced software features that are completely different than what's on the basic iPhone 12 or any other iPhone. To me, it's just ridiculous. I never cared about it too much until I experienced the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. That Pro mode completely changed the game. And yes, there are third-party apps like Filmic Pro, but at least as of right now, Filmic Pro doesn't have 10 bit color, Dolby Vision. And so you're not getting all the amazing new technology that Apple implemented into the camera. And so if you use the stock camera app, all I have is to tap on the screen and slide up and down for you know, exposure changes. And after the fact, I can go in and adjust the highlights and shadows a bit. But the fact that I can't control my ISO, my white balance, shutter speed, and dare I say, even have a log profile to shoot in directly in the uh, stock camera app, I, I think it's time. And they've spent the past couple of years really focusing on still photography. I'm really excited for Apple Pro Raw or whatever the new codec is coming out uh, at the end of the year for photos. If they can be the first company to create a raw mobile video codec, that will be a huge game changer. And if anyone has the time, money, and resources to do it, it's Apple. And so while the camera hardware and most of the shots that you get out of the phone are amazing, I just wish that they allowed me to have the control that I want as a pro. The iPhone 12 Pro isn't really a pro device. It's just another great iPhone. Now I'd love to hear what you guys think about all of this and my opinions. Let me know down in the comments below if you agree with me, disagree with me, tell me why. I'm open to learning, to changing my mind and all that good stuff. Just realized I'm not wearing my watch. That's a fun tan line. I'm really excited in a couple of weeks for the 12 Pro Max to come out and to see that bigger sensor, bigger pixels. I think it's gonna be an amazing phone. It's not gonna have any different software features than any of the other iPhones out there. And overall, I think that's just kind of a really limiting experience. And that makes me really sad because this has the potential to be the best camera phone out there, but the software is just too limiting. Thanks so much for watching guys. Hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.